Well, we're back again with the Word of God, ready to talk to you about Jesus. Reading today from the book of Hebrews, the ninth chapter, the fourteenth verse. How much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal Spirit offered himself without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God? You know, there is so much in this one passage of Scripture until if we had two hours to talk on it, we still couldn't get our thought over. So far as the completeness of what is hid within this wonderful passage of Scripture. But today I'd like to take just a few minutes and try to bring to your mind some things that might be of some help to you in your Christian walk of life. And also things that perhaps will be interesting to those that have never come to know Jesus. Maybe something can be said from this passage of Scripture that would make you to know that God has set up a thorough program for mankind so far as salvation is concerned. Here Paul is telling us as he points back to the Old Testament, he is telling us that there is a true tabernacle that is not made with hands. He is telling us that there is a true atonement that comes from a human sacrifice. And he is telling us here that the blood of goats and the blood of animals could never atone for sin. You know, the Bible tells us that the blood of those animals could never atone for sin inasmuch as those things brings to God's memory year by year sin or the act of sin. But Jesus, the Lord himself, coming in a human body, coming to be a human sacrifice, the Bible tells us that he purged our conscience once and for all from sin by his own blood. And having purged our conscience, then he entered into the holies of holies and there today he is at the right hand of the heavenly father. You know, it's such a wonderful thought to be able to understand and to, to know that God has done something that has secured mankind. When you look toward the eternities and when you look toward the grave and you look toward things that are coming, all of the disasters that seem to be forming to come upon this earth, then it makes you glad that somewhere at one time somebody really done something to secure humanity. You know, there's no security in this world so far as the things of this world or people of this world having the answer, there is no security in this world. I appreciate our forms of government that we have throughout the world that are legitimate forms of government or those that are concerned for the people. I appreciate the great orators that have contributed their part to the cause of humanity. I appreciate science and all of their efforts as long as they have been true efforts toward mankind and his security. But you know, in the light of all of this, they still don't have the answer. They still haven't come up with the answer as of yet. They still haven't been able to settle man's problem nor to offer man a security or a continuing peace. And so then when we see all of these things, we become aware of the fact that there is no hope in the earth for mankind. There is but one answer, and that is God. And when we think about God, then of course we think about His Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, who came into this world and who died for our sins, who gave himself without spot, without wrinkle, without blemish, that God might receive him in the behalf of my soul atonement. You know, it thrills my heart when I think about Jesus, when I think about the wonderful things of God and what he hath done for me and the love of God. You know, the Bible tells us that nothing can separate us from the love of God. And when you think about that, you ask yourself the question, what does God mean that nothing can separate us from the love of God? But friend, listen, when you think about Jesus and when you think about the dying at Calvary, you think about the suffering and you, you bring to memory the things that God did in offering up his only begotten son, then you know that there is such a great love that nothing could ever take you away from it. 
If God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, then we see the love of God manifested in Jesus Christ, the Son of God. And we see this great, magnificent love and we understand what God hath done for us. Then we say, Father, that's what you mean. You are telling me that your love is so great that you gave your only son, that Jesus is the conveyed love of God from your heart, Heavenly Father, and in that you love me so much that you gave the, the chiefest thing of heaven, that you gave the best thing that heaven could afford. If you gave me that, oh God, how could there be anything else that would be greater than that? And how could you withhold from me anything, Father, in that you gave me the best to start with? I know that you'll give me the other things because anything that you could give me in this world or the world to come it is, of course, less than the best that you've already given me. So I can rest with a sure hope, Father, that you're going to give me the best because you've already given me the best that heaven can afford. And then when I think about these things, and I think, now, Lord, how wonderful it is. Paul, the great apostle that received the revelation of Jesus Christ, here he tells me as an individual, he says, and nothing shall separate you from the love of God. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. There is no power that can do it. There is no heights, no depths, things present, things to come. There is nothing that can separate you from the love of God. But the love of God is shed abroad upon us by the grace of God and by Calvary, the love of God is abundantly given to us. I tell you what, it is a thrilling experience to be a Christian. It is, it is an exciting thing to know that God hath his eyes upon you. When you think about Christ and you think about God, you know you're not thinking about just an ordinary man when you think about God. You're thinking about the one who holds the universe in his hand. Like the song I wrote, you know, about the Lord. The Bible said, and he rocks the world like a babe in a swing. You're thinking about the one that scooped out the deep of the ocean, the one that took the stars and flung them from his fingertip. And you're talking about the one that has the all-seeing eyes, whereas the Bible tells us that the eyes of God are throughout the earth, beholding the good and the evil. And God is rewarding every man according as his work shall be. And then the Bible tells us also that God, it says his eyes are throughout the earth and God is going to and fro in the earth looking for the upright in heart that he might show himself strong in the behalf of those that are upright in heart. You know, I can't help but be thrilled when I think about God. I can't help but be stirred when I think about God because I know that God loves me. And knowing that God loves me means more to me than anything else. Friend, let me tell you, if you know that God loves you, what else is there to worry about? The Bible said, if your ways please God, he maketh even thine enemies to be at peace with you. But if our ways don't please God, then we've really got problems. But when you know that God is on your side, what else do you need? If you've got God, the Bible said, that my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches and glory. God will give you everything that you need if you serve God. Whereas the terms is used, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all of these other things shall be added unto you. The great mistake that mankind makes is that they seek everything but God's will and God's program. But you know, if we seek God and find God's will, then we don't have to worry about anything. So it is, it gives a great consolation when you think about God, when you think about the greatness of God. See, when you think of God, you think of somebody that has the ability to keep his promise. Somebody that has the power and ability to do what he tells you that he will do. You know, men might promise you different things and they may have good intentions, but even the wealthiest men in the world sometimes fail. They cannot produce the things that they speak to you about, you know, and those things that they promise you. And you'll be disappointed many times in life and those kind of things. But I want to tell you one thing, you'll never be disappointed in God. The Bible tells us that we are they that place no confidence in the flesh. You know, we should never put confidence in anybody. And I know when I say this, I'll probably get a repercussion from it. But I want